Hello, welcome to sql02pro.com. This is Hassan Mir. In this tutorial, I will introduce Oracle SQL to you. Okay, so the topics we will cover today is what is SQL. We'll talk about database tables and we're going to talk about a little bit of SQL history. So, what is SQL? First of all, you need to know SQL stands for Structured Query Language. Okay, now this is I'm representing a database with this uh, structure here and within the database you can see we have couple of objects okay and this is I'm representing data objects so let's say we have a data in the database now database software manages data okay and this is you and you want to talk to the database okay why do you want to talk to the database because you might want to retrieve some data you might want to insert new data you might want to modify data or you might want to remove some data okay so how would you talk to the database? The only language a relational database understands is SQL, Structured Query Language. All right. So you're going to be writing SQL statements in order to do all these tasks. Now, I've changed the diagram a little bit because you just don't talk to database like that, right? You need some kind of software called Query Tool, OK? Because this software, in this software, you'll be writing all the SQL statements, and this software will be sending uh, all the messages to the database and database will be sending the result back to this query tool software and that's how you know what uh, data is residing in the database. You Database is a software that runs in the back end. You can't just see the software, right? It doesn't have a graphic user interface. You need another software to talk to the database, okay? Now, example of the query tools uh, are Toad, iSQL Plus, SQL Navigator. There are tons of query tools available, okay? Now let's complicate diagram a little bit. Now this is you, this is the query tool and you're writing all the SQL statements query tool and query tool is uh, basically talking to the database okay, and uh, showing you the result given by the database back to you. Now what is this? We There are other things that talk to the database as well. For example, applications, software, or website, etc, etc. Okay? Now when you write a software or application for a specific purpose, there are tons of SQL statements coded within the software for a specific purpose okay for example when you go to a website you buy something the website is basically an application an internet store or something like that that internet store has lots of built-in logic for example when you buy a software the the internet store sends the message back to the database that hey remove one software from the inventory because it's sold etc etc right so lots of sql statements are built into this into the applications so it's not only you writing ad hoc SQL statements on the query tool, also built-in SQL statements are also sent to the database by the applications, okay? So as far as the database is concerned, anybody can talk to the database through using SQL. A human by writing SQL statement query tool or application, okay? Oracle simply or any relational database simply going to give the result back to you, okay? Now, let's talk about a table. What is a table? It's considered a table as an Excel sheet. It has columns and it has multiple rows. Columns uh, are representing, first, first of all, the table is representing an entity, the real entity in life. For example, if you want to store contact information about uh, your friend, you will create a table context. Okay? So, so each row in a contact table will represent some instance of a contact. Right? So this is your friend one, this is your friend two, etc., etc. Now each column represents some attribute of the of the entity. For example, first name, last name, phone. So you're gonna uh, create columns for all those attributes that you're interested in, or your business logic is interested in. Okay. So you can have table called employees that will have information about your employees. Department table would have information about your departments, etc., etc. All right. So usually, like we include ID column in each table so that each record can be uniquely identified, right? We can have two people by the same first name, last name, and perhaps by the same phone number. So it's not a good identification. Combination of first name and last name is not a unique identification. So usually IDs are kept so it's sequential increment, uh, they're in sequentially incremented, okay? So the intersection of a row and column is a value. So this is column, this is row, okay? So this the, that's how the table looks like. And uh, the data basically resides in a table, and you write SQL statements to retrieve data and put data back and modify it and to delete data. Okay, let's talk about a little bit of SQL history. So uh, we used to have flat file systems long time ago, and uh, still companies have flat file system because they perform much better and uh, they're much faster. The problem with the flat file system was like, let's say there's a flat file system, 
flat file system would have multiple files each file would keep would be storing data there was no specific format like file one has data about department about employee first line is about department and then multiple uh, like each line after that are representing employee within the department and suddenly department two line would uh, start so there is no s uh, defined structure and uh, how you're going to retrieve data in order to retrieve data you need to uh, have the proprietary logic uh, you know in hand because you need to know how the file is storing data is there like column wise data is stored or is it like a much in a loop wise fashion like this is like loop data right department record and all the employees within the department then department two record so like the uh, logic is basically from co it will differ from each company to company okay so if a programmer leaves the ne next programmer comes in the next programmer needs to know how uh, this company work how they store data there's no proper standard okay so uh, this is the picture now like we have relational databases we ha uh, like the data is stored in proper structures and we have a standard to talk to the database for example uh, like SQL statement can be used to retrieve any information from uh, from employee table for you all you, you need to know is the ID of the employee or the name of the employee you can say select a column whatever column you're interested in from employee table where the condition ID is equal to that or this like a bit like a English language that's how you write your SQL statement they have a proper syntax and here there is no structure like you have to write a complicated perhaps C programs to retrieve data so that was a big problem okay so you take home should be the problem with the flight file system was there was no standard each company would have their own standard and that was causing problem now in 1970 a scientist called Cord EF Cord he was an IBM scientist realized this problem okay and he tried to standardize things and he created a data model and a language okay data model is basically create how to store data in a standard fashion and a language to talk to that you know uh, uh, with the database okay yeah, the language was called DSL alpha okay then IBM basically uh, saw uh, profitable opportunity and they created system R project okay to leverage on on cards findings system R team you know simplified the language a bit okay and the language is now called DSL called uh, like the language that used to call DSL was now called Squire DSL Square was changed to SQL, then SQL then become SQL. Okay, so SQL is still now called SQL. Uh, you SQL and SQL are like synonymous uh, used terms. Okay, so now Oracle Corporation suddenly they came into the picture in 1977. It's a pretty old company, older than Microsoft. The only reason this corporation was founded was to capitalize on Cord's findings. So IBM also started their project, and Oracle came in and they released the first relational database before IBM. Okay. Now today, Oracle database is the most popular relational database in the market. Okay, that's pretty much it. This is a quick introduction on SQL. For more tutorials, you can go to the website sql02pro.com. Here, I would basically uh, give you a demonstration on uh, real SQL and tell you how to install your own database so that you can practice SQL. And in step-by-step -step manner, I will make you a pro in SQL. All right. Goodbye, everybody.